for many, it is more than just a book, while for others, it is simply a myth. Some base their lives on its teachings, while others radically reject it. But what about the Bible and its teachings? Make it the most controversial book in the history of this world. Is it possible to trust its authenticity? Can we be sure that it has not been changed over the years? The book that marked history. One day, when he was sitting at a place like this near the Sea of Galilee, Jesus said to his disciple, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things of new and old. Matthew 13, 52. The word of God is the treasure that Jesus spoke about. And he spoke not only about all things, he also spoke words that were recorded in the New Testament. He presented both old and new things. The old things refer to that which is found in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Bible, which begins accounts with the creation of the world and man. I am really fascinated by old stuff. I had bought antiques on eBay and found other things in flea market. The question I often struggle with is, how old is this object that I just bought? Then I start my research, which sometimes leads to fascinating results, especially if I'm able to find out how old the things I bought really is. But it can also be disappointed when you cannot find what are you looking for, like the date when an object was made. Can we also date back to the beginning of the writing of the Bible? Do we know anything about the accuracy and faithfulness of what we hold in our hands to the original text? To find the answer to this question, we need to take a quick look back in time. The Old Testament was mainly written in Hebrew, and the copies of the scrolls were reproduced in that same language until the 3rd century before Christ. The original Hebrew text was a consonant-only text, that is, composed only of the consonants, and the reader, while reading, added their respective vowels. There is a story about a group of 72 translators, six for each tribe of Israel, who worked independently to translate the Old Testament from Hebrew into Greek. This was possibly carried out in Alexandria, Egypt, because King Ptolemy II Philadelphus wanted a Greek copy of the Hebrew Bible for the famous laborer there. This Greek translation of the Old Testament is called the Septuagint, meaning the translation of the Seventy. The Jews later abandoned the use of the Septuagint. They rejected it at the Council of Yamnia about 90 CE. But early Christians, as explained in the previous video, kept using it. No complete manuscript of the Septuagint exists today. There are only Latin translations of it and papyrus. From the Reland Papyrus 458, which is the oldest manuscript of the Septuagint, only eight small fragments contain some chapters of the book of Deuteronomy are left. Moving forward, the next Hebrew texts we find are the Masoretic texts, that is, the Codex Hillelie, Leningrad Codex, and Aleppo Codex. The name Masoretic comes from the word Masorete, from Mazora, meaning tradition. The Masorets were a special group of scribes who were entrusted through the centuries with the difficult work of making copies of the Hebrew Bible. The enormous service that they performed is strictly connected to the Hebrew language, which uses no vowels. The latter are just pronounced intuitively while reading. The Masorets added vowels to the written Hebrew of the Bible to make reading it easier. 
the earliest known manuscripts are now no more extant. Of the Old Testament exists the Hillary Codex, which was written and punctuated, making it possible to read it out loud by Moses ben Hillel in about the year 600. The Leningrad Codex, or Codex L, is the oldest complete manuscript of the Hebrew Bible and can be seen in St. Petersburg at the Russian National Library. This manuscript was copied in Cairo, Egypt in AD 1008. The Leningrad Codex is linked to the Aleppo Codex, both manuscripts form the base of the modern versions of the Jewish Bible. Here is another facsimile of an ancient Bible. It is the Aleppo Codex. The original is at the Museum of Israel in Jerusalem. The curators of the museum claim that the principal scribe who copied the Codex Aleppo was Shlomo ben Buja'a around 900 AD in Tiberias, Israel. That's right on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. The text was then corrected by Aaron ben Asher. According to Moshe Perlman, the codex was looted and transferred to Egypt at the end of the 11th century and deposited with the Jewish community of Aleppo in Syria at the end of the 14th century. The rabbis and elders of the community guarded it zealously for 600 years during the riots against the Jews in Aleppo in December of 1947. The community's ancient synagogue was put to the torch and the codex, which was kept in the synagogue's cave of Elijah, suffered damage so that no more than 295 of the original 487 leaves survived. After a series of difficult events, the Codex Aleppo was brought to Jerusalem in 1958, where it is preserved. The shrine of the book is the building you can see here on my right. It was designed by the American Jewish architects Armand Philip Bartos and Frederick John Kisler and was inaugurated in 1965 after seven years of construction work. This building houses not only the Aleppo Codex but also the greatest finding of the last century, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The scroll first discovery was made between November 1946 and February 1947. Europe was struggling to be rebuilt after World War II and the State of Israel had not yet been created. But none of this mattered to a couple of young Bedouins, shepherds in the wilderness of Wadi, Qumran. Muhammad Deep and his cousin Jew Mohammed were tending their flocks on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea when they noticed some caves. Mohammed Edib decided to throw a rock into one of them, which is known as cave number one, and hear the sound of breaking pots. This inspired him to have a look inside. Mohammed Edib found some large clay pot in this cave. Most of them were empty, but looking more closely, he saw some that they were not broken. He may have hoped to find treasure, but there were just some old scroll, some of them wrapped in old blackened linen. The two young men took the scrolls to the camp and showed them around, trying to figure it out what to do with them. First, they looked to find an antique dealer in Bethlehem named Ibrahim, Ija. He told them that the scrolls were worthless, perfect because he thought that they were stolen from a synagogue. But the men did not give up and went to a nearby market where they were told to look for Kando, a cover and hobby antique dealer. Kando was intrigued by the scroll and asked the Bedouins to look for more. They found seven scrolls in total and sold out them to Kando, whom they also resold the scrolls to an archbishop of Syria Orthodox monastery 
or St. Mark in Jerusalem, and three to Salahi, another antique dealer, for seven Jordan pounds, about $340. These three scores ended up in the hand of a professor, Sukenik, of the Hebrews University. He wrote to a following after the first saw a fragment of the rolls. My hands shook as I started to unwrap one of them. I read a few sentences. It was written in beautiful biblical Hebrew. The language was like that of the Psalms, but the text was unknown to me. I looked and looked and suddenly had the feeling that I was privileged by destiny to gaze upon a Hebrew scroll which had not been read for more than 2,000 years. In 1947, the scrolls caught the attention of John C. Trevor of the American School of Oriental Research. He noted several similarities between one of the scrolls and the Nash papyrus. The Nash papyrus is a fragment from the second century before Christ, containing the Ten Commandments in Hebrew that Dr. Nash purchased in 1903. Up until this new discovery, that papyrus was the oldest Hebrew Bible fragment that was known and Trevor quickly began his research by interviewing the Bedouins who had found the new scrolls. The first press release about the discovery were published by Yale University on April 10, 1948, and they stated the following. The earliest known manuscript of the entire biblical book of Isaiah from the Old Testament has been discovered in Palestine. It was announced today by Professor Miller Burroughs of Yale University the director of the American Schools of Oriental Research in Jerusalem. In addition, three other unpublished ancient Hebrew manuscripts have been brought to light by scholars in the Holy Land. Two of them have been identified and translated, while the third still challenges recognition. Archaeologists first tried to identify the caves where the Bedouins had found the first seven scroll. And then, in 1951, the first excavation took place which continued until 1956. Eleven caves were identified as containing jars and old scrolls. From 1947 to 1956, some 950 different scrolls were discovered. A 12th cave was identified in 2017, even though no new scrolls were found. In 2021, more fragments of scrolls were found in the Cave of Horror so named because in 1960s, 40 human skeletons were found in that same cave. Remain of people who starved to death during the Bar Kokhba revolt against the Roman in 132 after Christ. Archaeologists are still searching the Judea desert for more such treasures. Um. Among the thousand manuscripts discovered uh, in Qumran, uh, about one-fourth of the manuscript, it means a bit more than 200 manuscripts, are biblical manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible. I mean the oldest uh, manuscript of the Bible on earth. And obviously we have several copies of the, of the same book. Of the book of Psalms, we have 36 copies. Of the book of Deuteronomy, we have 30 copies. Of the book of Isaiah, the great prophet of Israel, maybe the second after Moses, we have 21 copies. All of these copies are fragmentary, except for one. It's called the great Isaiah scroll, coming from uh, Cave 1, manuscript A. It's a full version of the book of Isaiah. Uh, the book of Isaiah is a very large book. This manuscript is the second largest scroll discovered in Qumran, more than seven meters of a running scroll. And this manuscript contains all the 66 chapters of the book of Isaiah, as we know from the Masoretic version. Uh, so in this sense, this is the oldest book of Isaiah on earth, and the oldest uh, book in a complete shape of the Hebrew Bible. Three copies of the book of Deuteronomy were discovered as well as one copy of the book of Ezra. Some jars contained scrolls translated into Greek, 
the books of Exodus and Leviticus, and Aramaic, the books of Leviticus and Job. The preservation of these ancient artifacts was possible because of the very unique condition of the Dead Sea area. The Judean desert is situated 400 meters below sea level, and the climate is consistently arid with stable humidity and temperature. The scrolls were possibly hidden by the sect of the essence during the Jews' wars against the Romans, 66 to 135 CE. It is very probable that all the scrolls were part of the Essenus library. According to historians Flavius Josephus, they display an extraordinary interest in the writings of the ancients, singling out in particular those which make for the welfare of the soul and the body. In the communal center at Kirbet Qumran is a scriptorium on the upper floor where possibly most of the scrolls were written by scribes. The majority of the scrolls are made of a parchment, some of papyrus, and a single one of a copper. The scribe used the black ink made up of a mixture of soot, gum, oil, and water to copy and compose the writings. But why is the discovery of Dead Sea Scrolls so amazing? We have manuscript, uh, there is a fragment from the book of Samuel, chapter uh, from K4. Um, it's in, from the second half of first century BC. So in total we have uh, 300 years of manuscript. The oldest are coming from 250 BC the youngest scroll from the middle of first century CE. So more or less 300 years of manuscript. And, and in this sense, um, the Qumran discovery give us a new perspective about the development of the Hebrew Bible. The analysis also looked at the findings numismatic value, this being the study of coins and money. In fact, the caves not only contained the jars with the scrolls, but also with everyday tools, such as coins. Some studies are still ongoing as part of the latest dating project of the University of Groningen, Netherlands. Preliminary results are confirming the assessments of the previous researchers. Some scrolls may even be older than what has been assumed up until now. In fact, those scrolls are the oldest Hebrew scrolls of the Bible ever discovered. Before the discovery of the Qumran scrolls, the oldest known manuscript of the Hebrew Bible was the Leningrad Codex, which was written in Egypt in AD 1008. With the discovery of the Qumran scrolls, this date was traced back more than a thousand years, since many of the Dead Sea Scrolls date from between the 1st and the 3rd century before Christ. What an incredible thing it is to have Old Testament Bible scrolls that date back to times even before Christ's life on earth. The book of Isaiah can be compared overall. 1,000 year period by analyzing it between the Codex Aleppo written in 900 AD to the Isaiah Quram scroll of 200 BC. Let us look at one chapter in Isaiah. It's the prophetic chapter on the Messiah's death found in Isaiah 53. The great painter Vincent van Gogh immortalized the chapter on painting, on a painting of his father's Bible. According to the Hebrew scholar Miller Burroughs, in his book The Dead Sea Scrolls, of the 166 words in Isaiah 53, there are only 17 letters in question. Ten of these letters are simply a matter of spelling which does not affect the sense. Four more letters are minor stylistic changes, such as conjunctions. 
The remaining three letters comprise the word light, which is added in verse 11 and does not affect the meaning. So the Hebrew scribes accurately and reliably transcribe the word of God and it has been preserved and unchanged over a thousand years. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Mark 13, 31. Jesus does reassure his disciples and everyone who believe in him that despite what is going on around us, his word is going to remain real and unchanged. The Ketel Hinon scrolls, the oldest surviving Hebrew Bible text, stand out to us as an outstanding discovery dating back to 600 before Christ. The most significant discovery in biblical studies is the verse in number 6, 24 to 26, containing the priestly blessing that was preserved to the people of God. Shalom. Isn't it amazing how the Lord allowed the preservation of this blessing to transcend history and impact lives till the present day? From a historical and archaeological perspective, we see that God has kept His hand over His Word so that it can reach us today unchanged in its meaning. Jesus does reassure everyone that His promises, His prophecies, and His loving words still have enormous value and that He is not going to change them, that we can trust Him and rely on Him. The presented archaeological proofs and many others clearly demonstrate that the Bible we have hasn't been falsified, even though many centuries had passed since it was written. We can confidently trust in the Word of God because the Lord has kept it safe and accurate throughout the ages. The Lord wants to give everyone His peace in every moment of life. So when it seems as everything is falling apart, doesn't lose hope. God has the tool to rescue your life. Pick up your Bible and take time to, like an archaeologist, discover the words that God is speaking to you. In the Bible, you will find an inexhaustible fountain that grants us hope, purpose, and life, bringing the rescue every human needs. It is truly the book that can mark history and still change life. In our next video, we will see more archaeological evidence that prove the accuracy of the Bible. Don't miss out the next episode. If you have enjoyed this video and desire to know more about this book that has changed so many lives, then we invite you to register for the free Bible course at the feet of Jesus. Come and enjoy the abundance promises, lessons, and values that the Word of God grants to us. This Bible course is composed of 30 lessons divided into three levels that will give you an ample opportunity to personally discover biblical truths. Register today at BibleWell.com and start the amazing Bible journey.